In this video, I'm going to show you how you can build an AI automation that will check your Outlook inbox. And from here, it will pull any attachments, actually push them to your Google Drive folder. And then we're going to leverage AI to analyze these attachments. And as you can see here, we'll actually include the link for the location of the file, as well as the description of what was in those attachments. I'm going to show you step by step how to build this. So if you're new to AI automations or just new to anything AI period, this video is going to be great for you because I'm going to walk you through all the steps you need to use in order to implement this. And first, let me give you a live demo so you can see this automation at work. What's going to happen is we're going to receive an email in our Outlook inbox. It's going to get pushed to our Google Drive folder and then then we're going to get an update here in the logs for our Google Sheet. This here at the bottom is a tool called make.com. This is what we're going to use to connect all of these services together, as well as our AI components. And if you've never heard of this before, or you've never worked with it, that's the part that I'm going to be focusing on teaching you today. As you can see right here, we just received some emails to our Outlook account. Right now, you'll see the automation light up here at the bottom. This is where it's looking for new emails or new attachments within our account. Once our automation proceeds, you can see here that this new file got pushed on here to our Google Drive folder. And then right now it's doing the AI processing in order to analyze the PDF that was attached to that email. And here we get an update with the logs. As you can see, we get the date of the file, the name of the file, who the file was from as far as the email. We actually get links to the files within our Google Drive folder so we can click them and look into them. And the cool part is that right here on the left, we actually got a summary overview of what's in the file. Here we can see that it was a referral letter about a root canal and it specifies who the person was from. Like in this case, it was a dentist file. And again, that was all from the analysis done with the AI agents. So if you work in a clinic or law firm, or you're just constantly dealing with a ton of different documents or just getting bombarded in your inbox with all kinds of different attachments, this automation is gonna be what's gonna help you not only make sure everything is stored concisely in one source, but also it's going to help you keep track of them way better. Just to recap again, this renames the attachments that are in there and it'll actually log when you receive this and it will actually just tell you right away where the location of the documentation is in terms of a Google Drive link. And you actually get an AI summary, including what was inside the attachment. If this is a solution that you'd like to implement in your business or one that you would like to provide for your automation clients, I'm going to leave a link in the description with all of the resources as well as the link for my calendar if you'd like to book a one-on-one -on -one video call with me. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to head over to this website called make.com. If you don't have an account, you can actually create one and their pricing is super flexible. They actually have a free tier, so that's perfect to get started. Once you log in, you're going to get a dashboard that looks like this. We're not going to get too much into the details of what everything on here is, but you're going to click at the top right, this button here that says create new scenario. And anytime you start making any kind of automation in make.com, this is going to be what your initial screen looks like. And this is where we're going to start putting together all the pieces one by one in order to get our functioning automation. So if we go back to our chart, remember the first thing we want to do is check for new messages within our Outlook inbox. And the way we can do that in make.com is we're going to click this plus button and we're going to select the module that's called Microsoft 365. If it doesn't come out for you like that, you can just type Outlook and here you'll get all of the different options for the modules related to Microsoft Outlook. So for here, we're going to select the one that says watch messages. Now here you're going to get some options as far as how you can connect make.com to your Outlook account. As you can see here, I've already connected mine, but in order to add yours, all you have to do is click add. And from here, you get a screen that says connection. We could just call it inbox connection, click save. And you'll be taken to a login screen like this. That's just going to ask you to authenticate or basically sign in so that you can use make.com and connect it to your Outlook account. From here, we're going to leave this as is where it says watch messages all because we just want to check for all new messages. Really here in main folder, we're going to click to choose the folder and we're just going to select the one called inbox because we want to check everything in our inbox. But if you had different folders, you could also specify on there. And because we only really care about the ones with attachments, we're going to click here where it says show advanced settings and we're going to scroll down to where it says attachments. Here it has attachments. Click that. And now we're going to click OK to save these settings for this module. And here, choose where to start. We're just going to leave it as from now on. And you can actually test this right now. We could just click this little purple arrow at the bottom that says run once. 
and it didn't really do anything but just the fact that it checked all the check mark screen means that it was set up properly so next what we're going to want to do is if we get a new message within our inbox we're going to want to retrieve the data within that message and the way we do that in make.com is again we click that arrow to add another module we select this microsoft one again and we're going to select the one right here that says get a message again because we already set up the connection the data should already be on there and here it's going to ask you for the message id now, when you click in here in this white box, you're going to see another window pop up and here it's pointing at the previous module, which was the one that we made earlier that was just called watch messages. That watch messages module, all it populates is these four fields, these OD data e tag, message ID, created time, and whether or not it has attachments. We don't really need to know what these other ones means. The only one we care about right now is the message ID one. So we're going to click that and then click OK. So now what's going to happen is when there's a new message within our inbox, we're going to retrieve the data from that message by sending that message ID to this next module right here. And this message ID is pretty much how Outlook labels all these messages in order for it to have a unique key, or I guess more of a unique ID. So it's actually just, I'm going to forward myself this message right here. These are just random PDF templates. And then right here, I'm going to test the automation. We should see this one here light up and then another one after this module, after it receives the ID. So let's click run once. Awesome. So whenever you see these little ones on top of your little circles or your little modules in make.com, that means that it was able to pass the data successfully. So again, we received the notice that a new message was received. You can see that this is the data that we have. Here we have the message ID, which is this very long nonsensical number. In this module, we can see here at the top, the input or what was passed to this module was the message ID. And then because we have the message ID, which is again, the ID of that specific message within all of the messages that Outlook has, we're able to get all of this other data. We can see here the content of the message, which we're not really gonna need for this tutorial. And we can even see right here that it has an attachment. And before we move on to the next step, I just want to take a minute to slow down and just let you know that maybe if it feels right now like I'm going kind of fast through these things, just keep in mind that in make.com, one of the very nice things about it is that once you get the hang of these concepts, it becomes pretty repetitive. So the more you see these modules and how things are changed and how the data is passed on, the more familiar you'll become with it. And the easier it will be for you to build these kind of automations on your own, which is kind of what my goal is for you. So definitely stick around because believe me, it does get a little bit easier with time. So now that we were notified that we got a message and we got the data from our message ID, we know that we have an attachment, but we don't really know anything else related to that. And that's what the next module is going to do. Again, we're going to click that little plus sign. We're going to select our Outlook module. And now we're going to look for one that's called list attachments. So this is going to retrieve data related to the attachments within that email. And again, what this requires is for us to give it that message ID. So here we're just going to select this little map option right here. And then here we get this other pop up window, which has all these little blocks. Just keep in mind whenever you see these blocks over here, it's just a reference to the data that has been passed in the previous modules. If we minimize these right here, you can see that this is number one, the first module right here, the number two, the second one that we just completed. So I know it seems a little bit bunched up, but that's just kind of how make.com structure everything. So the one we want is from the second one and we want that message ID, or actually I think we can actually get it from the first one. So once you click message ID, it's going to populate it here like this. And then we're just going to click OK. And you don't have to do this, but I would recommend it if you're just starting out with this. Anytime you add a new module, you could definitely run it and make sure that everything is working. As you can see right here, because we don't have a new email in our inbox, it's not really doing anything past this module. So I just go right here to this testing email account and I'm just forwarding myself these emails to my Outlook inbox. And once I receive that email, I just test the automation again. And you can see with all these ones up here that everything passed. So that's great. And if we expand the data from this last module, we can see that the output is data related to that specific attachment. And we see that the name of the attachment is right here. It's that referral template that we're just sending ourselves as a test. We can see here that it's a PDF file. So now that we can use make.com in order to retrieve data from our Outlook account, including what kind of attachments are being sent to that inbox, we're actually going to download those attachments to make.com. And if you were guessing that the next step was to add another module that was Outlook, you're definitely right. You're going to click right here. And now we're going to look for one called download an attachment. 
And here what we need is the message ID that we've been using earlier, which again, we can get that just from our very first module. And then we need the ID for that attachment, which again was passed from the previous module, the one that listed all the attachments. And if we look through this, we could see that right here, attachment ID. And then we're going to click OK and save that. All right, so I sent myself another attachment email. And when we test this automation one more time, we could see that they all go through. And here in this last one, for the output of the data, we see we were able to download a PDF. And if we expand this little data column, we actually get all these numbers, and that's completely fine. We're not actually going to see the PDF within make.com. This is just kind of showing that we have all the binary data for that file. Now, before we move on to pushing our file up to Google Drive, there is one more thing we need to add on here. Keep in mind, these scenarios, as make.com calls them, they have a certain flow of actions. Obviously, the way we've set them up, this happens first, and then the next thing, and then the next thing, and it's pretty much in that order that you place them. But there are some things that have to happen before you move on to the next module. In this case, with this third one right here, we have to list all of the attachments in the email. And once we're able to get the list of attachments, we then download that attachment. But something that I came across when I was building this was if I received emails that did not have an attachment, this would just ultimately get an error. Now, the reason for that is because this download an attachment module requires that you put, again, not just a message ID, but also an attachment ID. So in scenarios where my account was receiving emails without attachments, well, this would just get an error. So the way we can check for this is going to be with this little tool icon right here. If we click it, we can select an option called set up a filter. Now here for label, you can call it whatever you want. But these two fields are basically where you're going to check certain conditions and if these conditions are met, then we can move on to the next module in the chain. So here we could just call it, does it have attachment? I guess that's what I called it earlier. And the condition we're checking for is whether the email has an attachment with it. And there's actually a field for that in one of the earlier modules. I believe it was just called has attachment. Let me just look through it right here. And it's actually in the very first one right here at the very bottom. You can see where it says has attachments. So we're checking what the value for has attachments is. In this case, we see that for emails with attachments, it's obviously true. So if this has attachments field is equal to here, we could just type true. Then once that condition is met, we'll then move on to the next step, which is actually downloading the attachment. And before we move on, I want to recap real quick what we've gone over, just because I understand if this is new to you or you're still just getting started with something like make.com, you've definitely come a long way. And I think it's important to just really give you that incentive and encouragement because I understand these things take time, they take persistence. So where you're at right now is definitely no small feat, especially since I know I'm kind of going a little bit at a fast pace. But again, like mentioned before, it's going to get repetitive. You get familiar with it pretty quick, but I still just want to take the time to congratulate you. And just real quick for this first part we did, this was mainly focused around the outlook aspect of our automation. We were basically able to check our inbox in our account. We're able to retrieve message data. We then check what attachments, if any, are listed within our messages. And then we actually download those attachments to make.com. And with that in mind, we're now going to move on to the next part of our automation, which is going to be uploading these attachments to our Google Drive account. And we're going to be going over two ways that you can set this up in make.com. If you're using a Google business account, it's super straightforward. But if you're like me and you're already paying for a personal account for extra storage and you just committed to that, I'm going to show you some of the setup that you need to do in order to make sure that make.com can communicate with Google Drive appropriately. So we're going to go here. We're going to select add module and we're going to look for the Google Drive. That's this one right here. Let's select it. And then we're going to look for an option. We can just type upload and it's this one right here. Upload a file. Like when we first set up our Outlook modules here, it's going to ask you to set up your connection. So you're just going to select add and then you're going to click sign in with Google. And this will take you to a Gmail sign in page. Once you sign into the account that you want to use, if you're using a Google business account, no problem. It's just going to let you continue like we did previously with the Outlook module. But if you're using a personal Gmail account, you're going to run into this error, which is just basically saying that with these types of Google accounts, you don't have permission to do what you want to do, which is basically edit files, edit contents within the Google Drive folders. And if that's what you're seeing right now, I'm going to walk you through how you can still set it up so that you can still use Google Drive with your automation. 
So step by step, the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to go to our Google Cloud console. That's going to be this link right here, console.cloud.google.com. And once you go to a website, if it's the first time you're going in there, it might ask you to make an account, but it's going to look something like this. And from here, you can select what Gmail account you want to tie it to, just like you can have multiple Google Drive accounts with different Gmail addresses. Make sure you're using the one that's tied to what you want to connect to make.com. So we got that done. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new project. And the way you do that is you just click this little drop down here. As you can see, I already have some projects for when I tested it out. And you can just click new project right here. Here you can call it whatever you want. You can just call it Outlook Google Drive. And then you're just going to hit create here. It's going to take a little bit of time to load up here. So just give it a few seconds. And next, what we're going to do is we're going to enable the Google Drive API to make changes to our account. And the way we're going to do that is here in the drop down menu, make sure you select the project you created. In our case, we just called it Outlook Google Drive. We're going to select that one. Now we're in the right project. Then we're going to go here to the left, click this little bar menu, and then we're going to go to where it says APIs and services. From here, you're going to get a little search bar and here you can actually just type Google Drive API and here you'll get some results. Make sure you get the one that says Google Drive API. And now we're just going to click enable. It'll take a little bit of time to load, but once that's done, we'll move on to the next step. So now that we've enabled Google Drive API, we're now going to specify what changes or what permissions Google Drive API can make within this account. And the way we do that is we just go back to our menu here. We're going to go to OAuth consent screen. And here we're just going to select this external option and then hit create. And for app name, since this is really just a way for make.com to connect to our Google Drive account, we'll just call it that. For support email, we could just use the same email that we're using for this account. In my case, it's just hector.testing. Here, you don't really have to fill in anything else in here. And here where it says authorized domains, make sure you click add domain and we're going to select make.com. And then we're also going to add their older domain, which is called integromat.com. For developer contact information, just put the same email address that you're using and then just click save and continue. Now we're going to go to add or remove scopes in that next page. And here in the filter area, we're just going to look for Google Drive. And because we want the ability to read, write, delete, basically edit anything within our Google Drive account, you could just highlight them all and add them and then just click update and you can see we got these permissions on there after this just click save and continue now this is an important step for this part where it says test users make sure you add the email account that you're going to be using whenever you connect to make.com so again this email account for the gmail testing or for the google cloud testing is going to be the same one that i'm going to add as a test user and this is basically saying who has access to make this connection with your Google Drive account. So once you add that, you'll see that on here and then you can click save and continue. Once it's all done, you should see all these checks and then you just get this page that says summary. So we added our Google Drive scopes as well as created the test user for our application. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add the correct URIs in order for our application to be able to communicate with make.com. And all URIs are, it's basically links that Google knows it can respond to safely after it allows us to use the API to change things within our Google Drive account. More than anything, this is a safety and security feature to make sure that that whoever is accessing the things within your account actually has permission to be doing that. So again, within our dashboard, we're just going to go to where it says credentials. And then here we're going to go to create credentials and we're going to go to OAuth client ID for application type. Let's just select web application. We could just call it make app. And here in this part where it says authorized redirect URIs is where we're going to add the following links. So these are going to be the URIs that you're going to want to copy on here. And again, this basically we're telling Google that it's OK to send data back or to send a response back to these specific URLs. And once you've added all your URIs, it should look something like this within your Cloud Console page. And then from here, we're just going to click create here at the bottom. And once you complete that, this is where you're going to get your client ID and your client secret, similar to API keys, which I'm sure you've used before. This is sensitive information, so make sure that nobody but yourself has access to it. And if you're doing a tutorial like I am, make sure that at least you delete these before posting the video. So first, let's copy our client ID and we're actually going to add it to our make.com Google Drive module. So remember, we're getting this error. Let's click show advanced settings. Here, we're going to paste our client ID and then we're going to do the same with client secret. So let's copy that as well. 
and then we're going to click sign in and it'll take you to another Gmail login page. And again, make sure that you select the email that you added as a test user. So once you've done that, you'll get this message that says you've been given access to an app that's currently being tested. You should only continue if you know the developer that invited you, which again, in this case, you are the developer. So click continue and then continue one more time. And here it's just going over all the things you're allowing this app to do. And we're just gonna click see, edit, create, and delete all, and then continue once more. And now you have set up your connection in order to allow for attachments to be uploaded to your Google Drive account. Now that you've connected to your Google Drive account, here you'll be able to see what folders are available. And actually let's do select from list. Here we're in our Google Drive. Then we're gonna select, click here to choose folder location. And here we have a folder called office email documents. So we're going to select that one. And from here, we're just going to click OK and we're going to test it out. And one more thing before I forget, periodically make sure to click this little save button because earlier I forgot to do that and it didn't save. So just make sure you do that. And let's actually just clean out our Google Drive folder. Let's make sure we don't have anything. And I'm going to send myself an email with an attachment to my Outlook account. So click send. Okay, so I just sent myself this email. So now let me manually run the automation and we can see based on all those little numbers that it's running perfectly. So let's actually check our Google Drive and I'm not seeing anything here, but there we go. We now have the attachment, but now what we want to clean up is we want to change the name a little bit here because if we just push all of our attachments like this to this folder, they're all going to have the same name and that's not really going to be that much helpful. So here's how we're going to do this. So we're going to go to our Google Drive module right here and if you look at this particular part where it says file, that's the part where it selects what file is going to be uploaded to Google Drive. We're actually going to click the one under it that says map. Now here you'll be able to select in more detail what gets sent and how it's named. And if you can see here in this part where it says file name, once we look at the contents of this field right here on the details for our download attachment module, we see that it's just calling it Outlook email attachment. Again, that's probably because that particular module in make.com is only dedicated to downloading the file. It really doesn't do anything else. But because of that previous module we set up, which was called the list attachments, I believe, on here, we actually should have the actual file name when it came in in the email. And we can see in this field right here called name, it actually has the actual name of the file, which for this particular email we've been sending, it's just called referral letter. So we would actually use this name instead of the one that it's giving us by default. So let's actually delete that and select name. Now, the other thing you might wanna do is include the date and time when this was sent. And if we scroll down to our get message module right here and the data we received from that module, there is gonna be one that says send date and this is going to include the details of when that email was sent. So you can see these two fields next to each other. Basically now, whenever the file is named, instead of it just being that generic name that we saw earlier, which was just Outlook email attachment PDF, instead, it's actually going to call it according to these fields that we're using. But instead of having name and date, let's actually put it date and then name. So first we're going to select the sent date, send date and time. And then we're just going to add a dash there just for spacing. And then we actually want the attachment file name that was right here within our list attachments module and then click name. And then for data, we're still going to keep it as data. And if for some reason on yours, it's blank. You actually see this in our download attachment and you can see that it's this field data and this is all of the binary information for what's inside the attachment. And then we're just going to select OK. OK, so I just reset myself another attachment to my Outlook inbox and just deleted everything within my Google Drive folder. And now I'm just going to click run once, once again, again, the fact that we're not seeing any mistakes, it's pretty good. And even without looking at our Google Drive folder, you can look at the output of your make modules whenever you click these little numbers. Here we could see the input, that's the data that was passed into this module. We see that we gave it a PDF file or the data for a PDF. And then for the output, we actually get the link back of the file as well as the link to download it. So this pretty much tells us that it passed successfully or that the action was completed. And here we could see the name. It picked the time, the date and time, as well as the name of the file. And if we go here to our Google Drive folder, we could see what it was completed. But unfortunately, this kind of file format for the date and time, that's not very easy to read. That's the universal time zone. So we're actually going to format that just to make it a little bit nicer. So the way we're going to format the date is we're actually going to go back to our Google Drive module right here. And for now, let's just leave what we had for the name. 
name. I know we had already set the name and the date and we're actually going to use, uh, I guess you would call it make functions. Yeah, so I'm assuming they call them make functions. Well, anyway, they have format. It should pop up. Actually, we might have to search for it on here. Okay, cool. So it's called format date. And then if you click it on here, you'll see a little bit more information about how this works on the left. It's kind of hard to read, but basically it's telling you that whenever you use this function inside of it, you're going to give it basically a date and time in the universal format, which is how we're getting it. And then you're going to specify it how you want it returned for this particular example. It's month, date and year. But there are other examples here where you can get a month, date, year and time and so on and so forth. And you can actually you specify the time zone you're in so that's going to be super useful especially if you're working with a client from different time zone or something like that so let's go ahead and apply this we're just going to click the format date function right here and you can see it's already placing it for us here it gives us what we need in this first part we're going to put the universal date that we're getting and that was over here i believe it's called sent date yeah sent date time so let's put that in there not on the left we want it on this section okay sent date time where did you go i think we could do sent date time that's fine so that's in there and then here for the formatting that we're going to use we're going to use year month and then day so it's going to be capital y four of them dash capital mm dash capital dd and I actually want the hour and minutes too. So we're just going to do space and we're going to do HH. Actually, we would lowercase HH, MM, and then space A. And right now we're not going to worry about the time zone. But if you did want to include a specific time zone, you would just add another colon like this. And in this space, you would actually write the name of the time zone. So we're going to leave it like that. And we're going to press OK. So now that that's safe, let's try it one more time. Again, after I delete everything from my Google Drive folder, just for testing, let's run it once more. We can see it picked up an email without an attachment. That's why it stopped here, but there should already be one with it. Actually, I might not have sent that right. So let me just try again. I'm just going to forward myself this email, my test outlook account, send. Let's give it a couple seconds. And now let's run it one more time. And I don't know why it's not picking up the attachments. So let me go to my Outlook and just to make sure we're doing everything that we were supposed to. Let me just empty out my inbox. There's no emails here. I sent myself this email with this attachment. Maybe because it was the same content, same attachment. It wasn't picking it up as new. Not sure. But if we go back to our Outlook inbox, it's still not showing the message that I've received it. So let's give it a second. Okay, so I have the email right here. So now let's go back to our make.com integration. Run it cool it's uploading and it looks like it uploaded and now we have this much nicer date and time but actually i forgot to add the name of the file so let's clean that up and remember it was dash name and i believe the file name was in the list attachments so let's just call name right here and as you can see right here it's starting to get a little bit messy as far as the formatting we're using just to name a file and for this type of i guess file naming or this format of date and time we might want to use this later on and I don't want to have to be typing it up again or copying and pasting so we can actually just save this to a variable that way if later on whenever we're putting it on our google sheet we could just pick the name of that variable and it will automatically insert that date and time the way we want it formatted so I'm going to show you how to do that real quick as well let's just add a new module here and we're going to look for the one that's called set variable it's going to be here in tools and it should be yes set variable and we need to connect it to something so let's actually put it before this module right here so we're going to unlink these two we're going to move this one over here so now after we get and download the email attachments we're going to create the formatting for the date and time within this variable you would just call it date and time and here is where we're going to put the value and we can actually copy it from our previous module we're just going to take this part where we formatted the date and we're going to copy that or actually we'll just cut it out and we're going to put this in here. So now after we download the attachments, the whole point of this single module is going to be to create a variable that stores that date and time that we want it formatted. So let's actually just right click and run this module by itself. And we see here, I guess, since this hasn't ran from the beginning, it comes out as empty, but I guess that's fine. But if we look at our Google Drive module on here, Whenever we go to our naming part of the module, we should see an option, as you can see over here, 
that will include the date and time. And again, this tools module number 11, and you can see up here, it's number 11 as well. This is a reference to making sure that whatever we stored in here, in this case, the date and time is going to be what goes in here when we name the file. And let's not forget our dash. This way, if I have a ton of files to look through, if I know more or less the date where I'm looking for it, then I can just kind of quickly glance through this sheet and find exactly what I'm looking for. And that's what we're going to do the next step. We're going to use AI to analyze the attachments and give us a summary within our Google sheet. But before we get started in terms of applying this in make.com, I want to show you a skill that I think is going to be very helpful for helping you come up with your own workflows, for helping you come up with your own automations. And that's really just going to be breaking down the problem into smaller parts. Now, some people call that systems thinking or workflow making, whatever you want to call it. It doesn't matter if you're using a no code tool or if you're programming, if you can take a big problem and just break it down to smaller chunks, it's going to give you a lot more clarity in terms of what you need to do to accomplish the thing that you want to make. And here we start off with this, right? We know we have some PDF attachments and we know that we want to analyze them with AI. Now, if we could break this a more specific way, we would actually say that we want to analyze them with ChatGPT. So let's just uh, clarify that right here, because again, we want to extract that data and then we want to send it to ChatGPT and we want ChatGPT to pretty much give us a little summary of it. But if you were to try this within make.com right now, you would see that you actually can send directly to make.com from make.com to ChatGPT. I know you could probably drag and drop them whenever you go to ChatGPT.com or whatever, but in terms of API calls, you're not really able to send a file like that. But at the end of the day, it's not the PDF that we want to analyze. It's the content inside the PDF or the text that we want to be able to ChatGPT. That way it can give us a response. So we could actually zoom out a little bit here. We could just delete this and we would add another module in between here or block, whatever you want to call it. So now we have this step where we get the PDF, we extract the text. Actually, let's type that up. And then that text we're going to send to ChatGPT to analyze. Okay, that's great. And now when we look at our make.com automation, we know that where we're at at the moment, we can pretty much do everything that we need to do in order to download the attachment. So we know that everything that happens after uploading it to Google Drive is going to involve some kind of processing of the PDF in some way that we can extract the data. Maybe it's a module to format it. And then after that, we would pass it to ChatGPT. And keep in mind, we also have that step where we want to add the information or the response to a Google Sheet. So so that would be our last step add to Google Sheets. And maybe this was pretty straightforward, but the more you start building automations, the more you start trying to, you know, make your own stuff for yourself or for clients, it's going to be very beneficial for you to get clarity on this. Even if it's just from a perspective of kind of like having a rough draft or, you know, planning it out. The tool I use is Lucid Charts. There's a ton out there. There's Miro. There's, I don't know, there's a bunch of different ones. Some are free, some aren't. Lucid Charts does have a free tier, but actually it runs out pretty quickly. So if I zoom out here, you can see I have a ton of stuff. And if you're in my paid community or you've done one on one work with me, you know that I use this for everything from breaking down, you know, complex tasks and then just kind of going over them with you. But again, super helpful just to give you that clarity. OK, so now let's go ahead and continue with the make.com section. Now, there is one module on here that we can use to extract the text from the PDF. And let's just type this. It's this one right here. It's called PDF.co. And here, one of the options it gives you, it's convert from PDF. And let me see, it should be one that just turns it to text. Um, OK, convert PDF to structure CSV. OK, so on this one, it gives you different options to where you can turn it to. So let's actually select that one thing on here. It's going to ask you to add a connection. If you haven't created one, just click add. You can create an account with this company, PDF.co, and they have a free tier as well. So super easy to set up. Once you create the account with them in your home page, they're going to give you an API key and you're just going to add this on here. And just to be clear, this is what their website looks like. When you log in, you're going to go to your dashboard right here. And here in the home page, you can see these are the credits you get. You get a thousand and get this on the free tier. And right here, this is where you're going to copy your API key from. Obviously, I don't want to have to show it and delete it. But yeah, that's pretty much what you're going to do. And yeah, you're just going to paste this on here, like I mentioned. Cool. So what do we want this to do? Again, we're going to send it a file because we're already downloading the attachment from that um, Microsoft Outlook module. I think we could just leave this here as download an attachment, select it and then convert the type. We're just going to leave this by default. We want PDF to text. And I think that's going to be pretty much it for export type. 
we don't want to download a file. We probably just want JSON output because we're then going to send this to ChatGPT. So let's just click OK. And now we're going to try it out. All right. So I forwarded myself an email with an attachment. So let's run through it. You can see it uploaded to Google Drive and it looks like it completed on here. So let's look at the results real quick. And we can see here we were able to get an out. Now, as far as content, let me see body. So yeah, we can see this is all of the data that was on there, which again, it was just a, I think it was a generic invoice or something like that. I think it was about a dentist referral. I just made that with ChatGPT again. But yeah, we could see that it was able to extract the text from the PDF attachment. So now what we want to do after this, we go back to our little flow chart that we made on the spot. Next, we want to send it to ChatGPT to analyze. And if you're guessing that we're going to use a ChatGPT module, you'd be 100% correct. Here, if you type chat, you can have the open AI module. So let's just click that. And there's a couple of different options. You can set it up to where you just write out your prompt manually, but I want to leverage the message and assistant feature. Now this is going to be really cool because basically once you have this set up, anytime you send data to this assistant, it's going to process it with the same directions that you give it again, when you create it and write it out seeing that my connection is then if you go to your assistance, this is where it's going to note down what you have available here. You can see I have a couple that I've used, but I'm going to go with the dental clinic PDF analyzer right here. And before we fill the rest of this out, let me just show you real quick how you can create these assistants. Now, just to be clear, if you have a chat GPT account that you're paying the 20, $24 a month, you are going to need to set this up with some extra credits. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So you're actually going to go to platform.openai.com. And here in this section, you can see on the left, there's one that says billing. This is where you would add credit balance because again, you're going to be making API calls or API requests to ChatGPT, which is basically you're sending them data and you're asking to use ChatGPT services. So that costs money separately from, you know, just your monthly account that you're using. But you can set this up where I think the minimum you have to add is $5. And for me, the way I have it, I don't have auto charge. So once I run out of those credits, it's just, you know, going to decline any other request I send. So I never get overcharged for this, which is great. Anyway, once you're in your platform.openai.com dashboard right here at the right, you're going to click dashboard. And then here on the far left, you can see again, there's a couple of different options. We're going to go to assistance. And here in the assistance, this is where you pretty much write out what you want your assistant to do. Here in the system instructions, these are the directions I wrote for my assistant. And pretty much what I want this to do is I want to analyze the template for important information. And the main component of this is the template structure for how I want the data to be returned. I want to return with document type, primary details, key parties involved, and relevant dates, as well as, you know, if something's required. And then here at the bottom, I just gave it examples of some, you know, just generic responses to make sure it understands the kind of reply I want back. As you can see right here within my Google Sheets, when I get that response back, that goes into this document notes column. And within here, you can see again, the document type and the other information as far as uh, what it's about, who it's from, and then if there's any action pending, action required, schedule an appointment. So the reason I want like that is because since this is still going on a Google Sheets, I want things to be consistent and I didn't want a ton of, you know, text within these columns because again, that could just get cluttered really quickly, but that's just how I structure it out. Depending on what you would want to do, then of course you might want to change how you fine tune that prompt. But again, once you write down your system instructions here, here in model, you can select the GPT model you want. If you have a fairly straightforward task, you could probably just use GPT-40 Mini, which is a lot cheaper. But either way, I don't think the cost um, has been very high using 4.0. And just by default, what I've seen everybody do is setting the temperature down to 0.7, um, as you can see right here. And I think that's a good balance between it analyzing it correctly and then giving you consistent results. And the way you can check that it's safe, because it seems to just auto save, you could just refresh on here. And yeah, you should be good to go. And back in our make.com module again, if it doesn't pop out, just click refresh one more time. It'll refresh the list of your assistants. And again, we're going to go with the dental clinic analyzer, which is the one I've been using. So here in role, you're going to leave this as user, meaning that whenever we pass a message to this assistant, it's going to read it from the perspective of the user as in us, right? We're sending this data to the assistant for the assistant to analyze and the data that we want to pass on to this assistant is going to be basically all the text we extracted from the attachment. And we should see that here. I believe it's in object value. Uh, let me see. This looks like the introduction for the attachment. So I'm just going to select this. 
and then we're not sending it images, which is fine. And then we're just going to click OK. So when this runs, we should get the output that looks something like our response here, right? Where again, it breaks it down with a really short summary, kind of talking about what the attachment is about. OK, so I just forward myself another email. So let's run it. You can see it goes through all of them pretty quickly. It extracted the text and now it's in the request to ChatGPT. And here we were able to get this one, which means it completed. And if we look at the output, we see we were able to get a response. And now if you look back at our assistant information, we have details, keep relevant dates. And here we are able to see that format, meeting invitation, 2024 Dental Innovations Expo. Again, this document was just a generic invitation. And then the last part, status, you know, registration required, and it even puts a date on there. So that's gonna be super neat. Again, because now we're gonna have this very nice well put together sheet that pretty much just documents all of those attachments we've been getting. And we don't even have to look for them in our email. We don't have to just get frustrated searching in Outlook and trying to download and open them and check and fix the right one. Like here, we get a lot of clarity as far as what it's about. And we can make a decision in terms of what's important and what we need to deal with first. And now for the last part, and I do mean the last part because you pretty much almost done is if you're guessing adding the Google Sheets part to it, you're 100% right. That's exactly what we're going to do. Because again, this data that we're processing, that we're extracting text, that we're using AI to analyze, it's not really useful to us until we have a really, you know, really nice way to view it, a really nice way to store it. And in our case, we're going to be using Google Sheets in order to keep track of all these things. So we're just going to go back to Google Drive. We're going to select new and we're going to create a Google Sheet. And we're just going to call it something like attachments from office, something like that. And for column names, I remember we wanted the date. We wanted the name of document. We wanted to know who the sender was, so sender name. We also wanted their email, sender email. And we actually want the link that will directly take us to a document, so document link. And then last, we want the document notes. And this is the part where we're using AI to analyze it. Cool. So super simple. You can style this color it however you want. Uh, we don't really need to do that now, but now we have a place that we can send our data to. And now we're going to go to make.com. We're going to add another module in right here. We have the Google sheets one and we're going to select the option that says add row. Now, when you open this module, it might ask you up here, what Gmail account you want to use. Again, we're still in that or well, in my case, I'm using the folder from the one that I used to upload to Google Drive. So make sure you keep that account. And then from here, it's going to tell you which folder within your Google Drive uh, the location of your sheet is. So here, let's actually look for that. And we only have one folder in this Google Drive. We just call it Office Email Documents. And then we could see the list of Google Sheets, which again, we just called it Attachments from Office. So let's select that sheet. And then we only have one sheet. So let's select Sheet 1. And then here, it'll actually populate and show us the different columns that we have. The one for date, the one for name of document, so on and so forth. So within make.com here, we're going to decide pretty much what data we want to be sent to these specific columns. And the main one we want right now is the response from ChatGPT. So let's just go to column F. And for document notes, we're just going to send the results from ChatGPT. What's really neat about this is that we've already processed a lot of this data. For date, remember that variable we created a little while ago? Let me see. I think it was just called tools or yes, we had this one set variable. This is where we have the date. So we should be able to pull that up. Yeah, so it's down here for tools, set variable, date and time. So we can select that for the date for name of document. We also get that within one of our Microsoft Outlook modules. And that's in here right here in list of attachments. We have name and you could just do that together or in separate cells. That's up to you for sender name. We also get that from our Outlook modules and that should be around here somewhere. So yeah, here we have name. I just called that account Hector Dev. And then, okay, cool. Okay, so here we have within the get a message module, we had one down here that was sender name, and then we also have the sender address. So we can click that. In document link, we actually get this from our Google Drive module because it's the one creating the link for it. And if we scroll up through these fields, there's going to be a couple of options for the links. We get the web content link. We get the web view link. Let's select the web view link because if you select web content, I believe right away it will download it to your desktop. So we'll try this one. And then we just want to save these results right here and click OK. And now we want to make sure we save our automation. All right. So I really want to give this a good test run. So you can see right here, I just sent myself these attachments and their unopened emails and actually disregard this discover ad. I'm not sponsored by them. So that's just there. Okay, cool. And then here, these files should go to this folder within this Google sheet that we just created. 
we should populate and see the data after we extract it using make.com. So we pretty much have everything set up for our automation. You don't see a one here because I haven't ran it this time around. So I'm really crossing my fingers, hoping that this is going to be a nice demo. But if not, that's completely fine. Uh, troubleshooting is definitely a big part of uh, all of this. So let's click run and let's see what happens. Okay, so I really like running this. It always feels like a little race kicks off. But yeah, here the goal is that we get to the end. So we're analyzing in ChatGPT. Let's take a look at our Google Drive. We have a document there already. And okay, cool. So we already got the summary for the first one. We're getting the summary for the second one. And here this too means it's on its second iteration. And I believe we only got two this time, but it should have been three. All right, so I found out why it only picked up two of the attachments. And I found another, which I'll show you how to correct. But as far as the number of attachments, the main thing we have to change is on this first module, actually. If you take a look at this bottom part where it says limit, here we originally had it set to two, which means how many attachments it can process each time it runs. Now, that doesn't mean it's only going to process three, but it means, uh, remember how I mentioned earlier, this automation runs on a timer. It could check every single minute, every five minutes, every 15 minutes. But basically, we're saying that for each time you check, this is the max number of attachments it's actually going to pull. So we're just going to increase it to three since that's all we're going to test. But you can set that to whatever number you like. The other error I found I was getting was when I looked at the Google Drive, I noticed there was some repeated documents on there. And one version would have the new naming convention we were using, which had the date and the name. And then the other one had the old name and convention which just had the name without it so what i ended up having to fix was on the google drive module and i'll go over why we made these changes but i'm assuming because it was picking up two different names or something it was just causing it to upload twice and we're actually gonna have to do a little bit of string manipulation on here if you're not familiar with manipulating strings substrings you know expressions like that that's a little bit more on the programming side but I'm going to explain to you before I just tell you what to type. And actually, we didn't even need to map this out like that. I think this was a part of the mistake, too, where originally I had set the new naming convention here and the data on here as well. So I think that's why I was uploading it twice. But this is what we're going to do. So for new file name, all we want on here is the date and the name. If we look at the way our files are being saved on our Google Drive, remember, we have this nicely formatted date and then the original name of the file separated by a dash. So again, what we want is date dash and then the name of it. And these little squares are just to kind of like emphasize that they're separate fields. But the one thing we want to do on here, if you take a look at the module details, there is this part on here that says this parameter overwrites the original file name. So instead of it just being called Outlook attachment or whatever, it also says here that it does not have to include the extension. And if we look at this name field on here, so this is going to have the full name of the original file, but it does include .pdf. So I think that was part of it because we're kind of like saying, the string or the text value for this new file name that we want is going to be date plus a dash plus some name PDF. And then once it was uploading it, it would add on another dot PDF on there. And maybe that was just kind of like causing some confusion in the automation. But anyway, what ended up solving it for me and no more of those duplicate documents being uploaded was basically writing a rule in there. And that's what the substring manipulation is, where it was basically going to only look at everything but the last four characters. So it's the last four characters because you can count the period as one, you can count the PS2, the DS3, and I know very ugly writing. I'm using the mouse, DF as four, and I'm super zoomed in. But anyway, yeah, so really what we're saying there is we only want up to that part. Everything from here to the last four, we don't want them anymore. And the way that's written out on here is using a function called substring. So all substring means is just means part of a string and just means like a word or a set of text. So what we're saying on here is that we're only going to take of that string called invoice PDF. So let's actually just label this blue because that's what we're using on there. So how do we decide what part of this text that we're going to take. Well, we need to decide what part of it we're going to start in. So because we want to start at the first character or at the very beginning, we're going to state that by the number zero. That's just the way it's set up. And let's set these as black since that's the way they're going to be at on make.com. And where do we want this substring to end? Well, we're starting at the very beginning. We really can count from the left forward because that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But if the document is called something else like build.pdf, 
or invitation.pdf, those words are going to have a different length of characters. So that's why instead of starting from beginning to end, we already know that for any word, don't want any of the last four characters. Again, because P, D, and F are always going to be the last four characters for any PDF file or really for any extension of a document that we're using. So the way we can tell make.com that we want to start at the beginning and we don't want the last four characters, it's going to be by counting how long the entire word is. And then once we get the total count of all the characters here, we're then just going to subtract four. And there's there's actually another function that we can use for that within make.com and it's just called length. So we're actually going to put this in here after this colon because we're saying that the starting spot is zero and the ending is going to be determined by however long the word is and then subtracting four from that. Again, in here, it would just be type length and make this a little bit bigger length. And then inside of length, we would include the name of the word which I'll show you how to do that in make.com. So the length of this entire word or the length of all these characters minus four. And that's pretty much how we write that out in make.com. Again, I just wanted to explain that to you. I didn't want to just throw this formula in there without really telling you why. And actually, just so you can see it, we'll type it in from scratch, right? So again, remember the goal, we want to take off that PDF extension at the end of our document name. So here in make.com, we can actually go through these little function names. There's one here at the A that's called substring, and you can click that on here. And here it will give you some directions on how it's implemented. But again, if you haven't really seen this before, this might not be super helpful, but you can see here, you get the word hello, the starting point is zero. So the very beginning, which is the letter H and the ending part is the number three. So the third letter. So the result you would get would just be H E L. Cool. So we want that on there. And again, the word that we want is the actual file name that we originally got. So let's go back here. And if we type name, we can actually see here the original file name. So let's select that one. So make sure it's in the right spot. So we know this is our entire word and we know we're going to start at the very beginning. So in this little space, we're just going to type zero. Now remember at the end, we want to remove those last four characters, the period, the P, the D and the F. So in this last part, we can't specify where we want to end without doing that calculation. So within this space, we're actually going to look for the length function. That's going to be right here within your functions. And here for the length function, we should see a little tutorial as well. And you can see on here that for whatever string or whatever word you type in there, it's gonna return a number. So it pretty much just counts how long the words are. And in here, we wanna count the length of the name. So we're gonna type name in there one more time. So once we get the total number of letters for the name of our file, we're then gonna subtract four. And there's actually another little symbol for it on here. It's here at the bottom with the operators. So that's a subtraction one. I mean, it just looks like a minus. And then four, right? Because remember, we wanna remove that. And then we're just gonna click OK to save that. And I know that was kind of a long explanation, but yeah, that's just some string formatting we're doing on here so that we can get the correct file naming convention so we don't get duplicates because at that point, you know, if it just gets messier, that kind of defeats the purpose of why we're trying to do this. But yeah, that's pretty much all you need to do to fix this. So we're going to save this and we're going to run it one more time. All right. So I just sent myself these three separate attachments. Currently, I don't have anything in my Google Drive folder and I don't have anything in my Google Sheets log that I'm using to keep track of this data. So let's go ahead and run the scenario one more time. And again, so far so good. I know we changed this up, so I'm glad that's working. We should see the first document on here and we should see in just a few moments, the first line to populate here with the data for our Google Sheets, which just popped up and we see here, this is the document note. So I was able to analyze it here. This is just something we have to format within the cell. So I'll show you how to do it in just a moment. And right now we're processing or we process the second row and we have two documents on here as well. And we should be processing the third row as was the probably the third document as well. All right, so I did a little bit of an investigation because I did see I was getting like duplicate attachments within the Google Drive folder. And long story short, after looking through the scenario and some other stuff I had made, uh, pretty much I just had a bunch of extra Google Cloud projects that I had been making using the same email, same testing account. Um, so that's probably what's causing the issue. Um, anyway, deleted those and also changed the name of the Google Drive folder I was using. And that's pretty much what fixed it. But I know it seems like a little bit, a little irrelevant, but in case you run into an issue like that, just thought I would share the solution with you guys. But now here I'm going to do the run and here I have the emails I just received with the attachments. And here I have the blank, uh, 
the blank Google Sheet with no documentation, nothing has been analyzed yet. And here's the empty uh, Google Drive folder. So let's go ahead and uh, check it out one more time. And then here we see that what takes a little bit of time is really just the chat GPT part. And we should see the first result populating here shortly. I feel like I'm a sports announcer or something, but it took too long. So maybe we got a mistake. No, we didn't. Okay, cool. So it's right there. We have the date, we have the name, and here we have the analysis of the document. And here we have the second one. And we look at our Google Drive. We should have one or two files. Okay, so it looks like it completed uploading the three and it should be working on the third line now. And great, as you can see right here, this first column, that's just the date and the name. The second column right here, it's the name of the file. Here, the name of the sender, email of the sender. Here we actually have the link for the file. So that's super neat. And then for this last column, we have the AI analysis which again, just gives us a very brief, very concise summary of what, was in, of what was actually in the content of the PDFs that were analyzed. And if you're serious about improving your AI skills and automations, definitely recommend that you sign up for Simplify AI. That's my community where we focus on giving you the live calls, the courses, and all the resources that you need in order to stay competitive in the age of AI. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.